Good afternoon and thank you very much for joining our talk and uh, Gita and I today would like to talk about our project supported by the Royal Society of Chemistry on achieving inclusivity and promoting diversity through the redesign of continuous assessment in chemistry curriculum. So uh, in the last years there were many changes in teaching core chemistry modules, in particular in analytical and organic chemistry. There are many different reasons for this. Technological development brought us new instrumentation that our students can try. We discovered many new chemical reactions and processes that again students can uh, learn in the lab. And also technological solutions became uh, available, such as virtual learning environment. But despite all of these uh, changes that significantly enhance our student experience. Unfortunately, approaches to the assessment remain mostly unchanged. And uh, those approaches to the assessment, in particular to the continuous assessment of core chemistry modules, are essentially based on the numerical outputs of the workshops, how many exercise students solved, how many were correct, what was the correct solution, and so on. And standard lab reports that are based on how many reactions students do, what was the rate of the reaction, and so on. But unfortunately, these traditional forms of continuous assessment, they can hardly respect principles of sociocultural and linguistic diversity. Our students come from everywhere in the world. They may think and express themselves in a very different way. So they limit the development of general chemistry cognitive skills. Future employment, it's not always about numbers. It's about reflection and logic construction of what work and what doesn't. And also diversity of special educational needs. So in many situations, it has a very dramatic impact, uh, impact on student mental health and, in, and resulting, uh, resulting in the so-called elusive underperformance. Our students would like to be assessed uh, fairer, fairly, and we as module leaders need to help them with that. Here comes our main research question of this project. How can we redesign our assessment to be more inclusive to avoid this situation described? So I do not want to talk about the entire project because we don't have time for this. We would like only to share with you some first steps in this direction. A majority of the changes majority of the strategies that they are, that we uh, adopted for our um, assessment are based on the active learning strategies so we place student in the center of discussion so we trialed this in three modules it's one postgraduate module that is used as a as a trial ground it is a hybrid module that has different components including practical sessions and also for implementation we selected two large modules in year two uh, these are core modules so they are seated by all the students taking chemistry course and we are two module leaders of this module so in the preliminary study we focused on only two types of assessment that we wanted to change. The first is uh, uh, regards the lab reports. Uh, in the normal lab report, we expect students to produce equation to calculate the numbers, and that's essentially all. And we mark them on based of how successful they are uh, they in those solutions. But what if we change the lab report? What in, if instead of marking numeric output, we actually create a story? So students will work individually, they will construct their story and they will focus on their own achievements. They are not focused on numbers, but actually what work and what doesn't work. How uh, we can place a trial and error approach in this discussion. So here we are not analyzing numbers, we are analyzing the individual learning curve that is created through this storytelling by students. So that was our first uh, attempt to change the lab assessment in the large uh, modules. The second type of exercise that we also focused on, uh, some of the workshop does not need to be individual. Gita will talk more about different types of workshops that we implement, but I would like to focus only on one type, workshops in small group. We can ask students to work as a team, 
They can learn together, they can learn from each other together, and they can help each other. They, they can deliver the result as a team, but also we can find very efficient way for discrimination of individual contribution. For instance, for using tools like body check or peer wise that are also available for us. So I don't want to focus on problems, obstacles that we try to solve. I just would like to mention three important component that uh, if we would like to bring this forward and adapt for different chemistry, not only chemistry modules, we should always consider workload because changing from the numeric outputs, essentially it's a box ticking exercise that student put the correct number in the right place to the storytelling increase dramatically the workload. So we need to make a number of assessments smaller. The first is scalability of small work. Group exercise requires a lot of staff and student time, but we should not switch all of our workshops always to the teamwork. We should also not to forget about individual learning. That is also an important skills. And finally, the communication between student and staff should be way beyond the workshops and labs. It should be a two way communication and feedback in particular in the early stage of this uh, learning process is very, very important. So now I will pass this to Gita. Thank you, Konstantin. I will continue this talk, but giving more details about uh, inclusive delivery and assessment of our year two labs, which uh, Konstantin and I um, are the module leaders of and how um, it works in terms of inclusivity. Konstantin, can you change to another one, please? Um, we have, for example, in one of these um, uh, labs, we have variety of experiments. We have to empty experiments available in the lab. So it gives the opportunity to assign experiments to students meeting their requirement. For example, UVVs, one of the learning and working with that is one of the learning outcome of this module. One of the student was a disabled student and couldn't measure things accurately. So she came to me and I straight away switched the experiment to another UVVs experiment, but it met her requirement and it didn't add to her stress. Also, the pandemic taught us that we could have a combination of virtual and live experiments. Some of them are in the lab, they must be in the lab, but some of them could be done. It's only using software, data analysis, could be virtual. We have checkpoints in the lab. When a student set up things or collect the data, this like key stages of the experiment, they get feedback from demonstrators. They make sure they do everything right, which adds to their confidence uh, and reduces their stress. And they don't have to repeat the experiment because of a simple uh, mistake they made. We have some formative workshops. Not every workshop has to be assessed. For example, error analysis. We want them to uh, focus on learning in the workshop. One of the most complicated techniques used for chemistry students especially without A-level maths. So what they do when they are assessed, they focus on learning in the workshop, they get feedback, and then they are assessed based on writing, doing error analysis in their lab reports later on. And skills audit. Students are equipped with a variety of skills in the lab, especially in these labs with all the techniques, equipment and everything. But can they articulate them to employers? Obviously not. And we learned that from uh, the statement they write. So in collaboration with our wonderful career and employability team, we created the skills audit. So they map the hard skills with employability skills, their soft skills, and uh, they do reflect on them and they basically write something which is ready for them to write their personal statement applications yeah. and present them to employers yeah. later on. We have pre-lab activities. Basically, all the experimental scripts, cash risk assessment, visual aids, including videos and photos of equipment setup, experimental procedure are available to students. It's very helpful for every student, especially disabled yeah. students, um, students with mental health, international students. And um, when they are confident, they take an online assessment, they get instant feedback. And when they are prepared and confident, then they go to the lab. 
Can I have next point, please? Um, marking in our year two labs has always been synchronous. It's been a dialogue between markers and Marketing. students to make sure students get instant feedback, they reflect, they marking is true, understanding everything, going through the report and uh, discussion with markers. And then during the pandemic, we have we had to switch to remote um, marking. Again, synchronous using Zoom on our teams. And then we learned that we can use hybrid um, marking. We can give this opportunity to students that some of them feel uh, confident to have online marking, some of them in person in the lab, so they can choose um, both it uh, through the dialogue with markers. And then some of the workshops are summative. They have to be summative. They have to be assessed and the students learn, learn techniques. They gain their knowledge and they are assessed during the workshop or straight away submitting a work after the workshop. So basically we have given, uh, we have combined different um, assessment and delivery methods even for labs to make sure we are inclusive and we meet requirement uh, of um, all students, diverse group of students with various requirements. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for listening.